Aloha YouTube, this is Kai Turner, and I'm bringing you another review of the BMW 5 Series review. And you can see we got this nice cream color. Rims in the front, we're looking at the 19 inches. And then in the rear, you can get 20 or 21 inch tires on this bad boy. This is standard style right here. And you can also get the available other styles. You got the sun roof right here on the top. Pretty snazzy, you know what I mean? You get the visors, block out the sun rays if you're in a place like Florida like we are right now. To start the and review, I'm gonna actually show the driving portion. So for all those interested in that, let's get into it. This was the day before the hurricane hit, um, you know, Miami and Tampa. So it was super cloudy and the rain started to come a little bit later. But right now, we're just enjoying the vibe, seeing the nice Miami beach before we went back to our house in Norway. And it, it got a little crazy, I'm gonna be honest. It got a little crazy, but look at this. So you can see how the instrument cluster kind of works with the heads up display so you can always kind of see. Yeah, if you haven't ever been in Miami during like tropical storms, oh, it's crazy. You can see how the navigation is working with Android Auto. So it's got a lot of features built into this car to kind of help you out at all given times. One cool thing I love when you're on the road is that the heads up display shows your tachometer. So you don't really ever need to look down at your gauge cluster. You can just kind of see it on the screen right there, your little mini screen in the heads up display. And uh, it kind of gives you all the vital information you're gonna need. So this is looking like the aftermath of a movie or something like you see up ahead, you can't even see the buildings in the background is so foggy. But um, we ended up getting close to the airport and that's when I wanted to film my ultimate review. So I filled up and I got ready to do my first zero to 60. The problem was I didn't have it in sport mode. So this is a comfort zero to 60 uphill. As you can see, came to a complete stop. And then I started to go off and it's pretty not too bad actually. For uphill in comfort mode, that's pretty good. And this was a more proper 0-60 because it's on flat ground. But as you can see, I'm still in comfort mode. I totally forgot to do that until I like went back to the thing, back to the airport. But it's okay. You can see me actually getting the 60. So I'd say probably like six seconds, maybe around there. Now I'm going to finish the car portion of the review. Under the hood, we're working with a four-cylinder, kicking out about 260 horses. Depending on which model year you got, this is 2022, 2021, 2023, also around the same figures. Now we're going to bring you into the interior so you can see what this car is all about inside. So you can see you got the ambient lights, pretty cool, super spacious back here. I mean, look at those seats. The guy even said, one of our friends said, he legit thought this was a 7 Series that has so much space back here. I mean, you can see, sitting down, I'm like a good 5 foot 10, so this is a good, uh, you know metric of how tall you got to be to get into one of these things notice got a lot of leg space and this is where actually where i drive at so you can say super good leg space you also got climate controls in the back you can control sliders things like that and then two usb type c ports and a cigarette lighter so you got a lot of amenities back here just kind of chill out of course we have the pull down little lever thing you can store things and even a pass through into the back so you can get a uh, few things from the back side through the car and this ambient light can actually be changed in the settings we're going to show you that in a second also the lights you got the cool little things right here and via the touch pad on the front you can actually control different light sections and uh, settings and things like that this is how the hazards look when they're on cool little brake lights and that's how they look on the front side. Beautiful LED daytime running lights. Really liking that design. Here's a nifty cool feature. When the doors open and the car is on, it actually makes this little thing to let oncoming cars know or passengers or people that uh, the car is, you know, obviously open and on. That's pretty cool. I love that. They also have wireless charging in the car. I love that. Another USB port up front so you can charge your phone and obviously a cigarette lighter so you can have two more slots if you are one of those type of guys all right so i'm gonna try to cover all the features as quickly as possible here 
on the button collection selection screen right here you got obviously your different types of modes different modes set the entire car into that so as you can see sport mode changes the entire gauge cluster to sport mode and also for the heads-up display as you can see right there it adds a little tachometer i'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better um let's say i rev up it affects the tech rev rev and see see cool things the cool the cool thing about this car is it actually lets you rev up to you know like good things even while your car is idling they know bmw drivers um in comfort mode it switches to this more dynamic setting where you can kind of like you know see more important vital things like the speed and things of that nature the maps will also be there um the cool thing about the heads up display is actually it shows a lot of extra things too like if the road is uneven it'll put like little warnings right here that says like roads uneven and makes little symbols if you're using google maps or something like that ways it puts the navigation here like like oh make a left turn in two miles or make a right turn really cool actually i love the heads up display um in this car it's a 2022 feature um and then in eco pro mode it basically switches the entire driving experience and as you notice the entire gauge switches and this is the speedometer but this now becomes like this brake meter where it gives you energy back into the battery uh so like when you brake it'll actually, you'll see, um, you know, like how much energy you're putting back into the car. And the cool thing about that is that if you notice, there's a battery gauge and, you know, you can almost regain energy in miles just based on driving, you know, eco-efficiently, eco I guess. You could. The other features over here, this is uh, parking sensors. You can turn them on and off if it's a little bit too much. Uh, stability control, you can turn it off in one button. I love that in this car. If you're a drift, uh, drift type of person, you're really gonna like that feature. Parking and then your auto hold. This is the, the point of contention. A lot of people love and a lot of people hate the BMW gear shifter for three series, five series, seven series, they use this, which basically you, to go in reverse, you hold it down and you push it forward twice. To go in drive, you push it back twice and neutral in the middle. Uh, and to park, you just press this P right here put the car in park it's kind of a unique system and if you want to go manual well you have paddle shifters right here or you can just put the uh the gear level to the right i'm in park right now so it won't let me do that but let's say i was in drive i just put it to the right like that and now i'm in manual as you can see the car actually has the gears on the bottom so you can actually um see so s1 and if you're in sport and it'd be like you know sport modes really cool they have and these are for quick settings on the main screen so you can see like you know say you want to message your media you can do that in one button that's just media you want to message your comms got that right there all your contacts um the main menu button right here you got your maps right here that's just the car's default map though you can use apple carplay or um android auto as, as well both of those are compatible and the navigation is obviously the last one. Um, you got back option, and then this is a touchpad. Like you can notice, you can scroll on the thing, but you can also use the click wheel around the sides to to manually select. So it's a few ways to do it. You can go up like that. You can go. You can use this in multiple ways. You can click it, tap it, or scroll it. Really nice. In terms of climate control, they have a knob so you can actually control exactly what temperature you want. People love the knob, so. Of course they had to have that you can have auto or you can manually select all of these cool settings auto basically just adapts to like whatever the outside temperature is and it kind of makes it a very similar temperature to that you can uh, sync the two if you want and obviously the normal heat controls and seat controls so you can have like you know hot or cold seats if you want uh resurgent air all the normal stuff presets for all your music and this is for the automatic, you know, start stop when you know your car is in park. Uh, some people love that feature, some people hate it, but at the end of the day, uh, the fact that they have a button to turn it off easily, it's nice. Now we're gonna get to the main things, which is the car. And there's so many things you can do in this screen from, you know, your driving controls to knowing all your driving information, uh, like which sport displays you have. If you're, you know, track type of guy, you can see like exactly all of your stats on things like that. You can see your g-force your energy flows you know literally anything you want to you want to know you can see in this car and based off with what, what driving mode you're in 
uh, it'll actually adjust that too. So if you're in sport, you'll see the engine's like, I'm running hard, you know? But if you're in like Eco Pro, then it'll be like, nah, you don't really need that. Just like driving style analysis isn't available while you know, you're in sport, but if you're in Eco Pro, then obviously you can see driving style analysis because it wants to know like, you know, how efficiently you are at cars, at driving the car. Almost like a skill-based thing, you know? Um, in settings, you got all these different things. Exterior light is actually really cool. You can actually control how many times it beeps and things like that. All the general stuff you can see in here. If you want to change the style of the, the gear, uh, you know, the, the driving display, you can do that. Heads up display, you can control all that from there. And even the ambient lights, you can also control those as well. And that's really cool, I think, you know, in terms of like overall customization. This is a new feature with um, 5 Series and a 7 Series where they have different experience modes. As you can see, the air fresheners have like different scents inside of them so that you get this kind of cool experience when you're when you're driving and you can you know have the car reflect that in terms of like music and the air and things like that um it's kind of a cool feature you know if you're if you're really into that like car being a total experience type of uh of, of thing your car caring you can have it revitalize you or relax you and let me get to the actual sentence so you can see that all the ambient lights as well you can switch but before I get into that, we're going to talk about BMW's wake word, just like um, Google or Alexa. You can just say, hello, BMW. Ambient light. I have already turned on the ambient lighting. Built in, you actually have all of these apps already installed. You get your lap times, you got uh, Alexa, different climate controls, and pretty much all the warnings that they would tell you when you're on the road via the heads up display. Here's the heads up display settings. You can see you can control all the different, you know, height and things like that. And also have it show you road warnings, your tachometer if you're, you know, in sport modes, and even like speed limits and things of that nature. So it's, it's really cool the amount of settings that you can have in just the, the heads up display. But back to the settings, if you scroll to the right, you can see you got additional settings like interior lighting. So now we can show it. And you got all these different colors you can choose from as well as you know you can choose the intensity of it so like if you choose to say lilac the whole interior has this lilac finish really cool if you go with say green and white it'll go green and then white on the top um you can go with even like lilac and white and it'll work people like blue blue is really cool all blue very very BMW right here with the, with the blue on blue. So it's just super cool that you can, you know, customize that. You can even have a white. If you want just all white or you want like bronze. Like any any custom, any color combination you pretty much want, you can get. So yeah, this 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 car has a lot of cool settings like that. Um, you can choose the brightness, the intensity of it and things of that nature. If you want it to be like super vibrant, you can do that. You can see makes it like like that for if you can dim it for nighttime driving so you see how the top one got a lot more dim many cool features you got there climbing control you can have everything automatic so once you get in the car it just adapts to whatever it is outside if it's hot then it'll you know get hotter if it's cold it'll get way more warm and then you can even adjust what the key fob buttons do and i think that is an underrated feature this is pretty much all the essential settings you're going to be going over when you when you drive the car there's many more in the iDrive settings, but again, if you've ever driven a BMW before, a lot of those things are pretty much the same as they were in previous things. The ones that I went over are the ones that they actually switched. And I really like that the interior of this has that spacious feel, so it's kind of like, you know, you're getting a semi-premium experience, but also with a five series, five series package, you know what I mean? Like, cause a three series is a little bit too small and a seven series is a little bit too priceless for a lot of people, you know, it's, it's a little expensive though. So this is a great middle ground for a lot of people. I think you should really consider it if you're a BMW, you know, you really like the the, the, the aesthetic of BMWs, this is a really good car. I mean, even this, look at the steering wheel. I mean, you got so many things, uh, all these different settings on there. It's just, a, it's, it's a clean interior for a car and I really like it. That'll be all. 
As always, hit the subscribe button if you like technology, review, and as always, have yourself an awesome day. Peace.